Today we're going to talk about extending the Kubernetes API and really why it matters to you even if you're not using Kubernetes today. We're going to talk about the Kubernetes resource model, some of the properties and conventions that are in addition to the RESTful API, uh, extending the Kubernetes API with custom resources, and finally, some of the industry implications of that. So you've heard the pitch. I assume most of you have heard of Kubernetes. Enables efficient bin packing and orchestration of planet scale applications and all that. This is not that talk. I just heard someone sigh of relief over here. It's OK. We're going to move on. We're going to talk about something a little more specific. So recently, Brian Grant wrote a paper. It's a great paper. In it, he said, Kubernetes is not just API driven. It's API centric. So that sounds good. But what does that actually mean? So here's a diagram that is a little bit extended to include some other systems. But essentially, users and systems uh, like CI, CD, and other automation uh, all access the same APIs uh, in the master. They talk to the API server, which is essentially the hub of the hub and spoke model that is Kubernetes. Uh, and it persists data to etcd. And then other systems, these controllers, uh, are responsible for watching the API and taking action. So the whole thing is essentially this big loop of observe, diff the current status against the desired state, and then continuously work to bring the system into alignment with the desired state. So again, the important part here is that humans and automation are all work. They're multiple actors. Uh, it's a, a world of essentially chaos. The observed state is the truth. There is no other truth but that. The multiple actors, they're assumed and supported cheerfully. This is great. Lots of actors, lots of things working against the desired state. The desired state is really the only thing that matters. And resources are never assumed to have a single exclusive owner. Now, there are role-based access control. There are ways to restrict access, but the resource itself is not owned by a specific owner. And there's no strong ordering guarantees or transactions across multiple resources. This is really important. There's graceful tolerance over these strong guarantees. In distributed systems, we've learned over the years that this just is a better model. Uh, and we really unapologetically uh, assume that there are some trade-offs. There's no strong ordering, pessimistic locking. There's no atomic transactions across resources or strict resource ownership. And there's no ref referential integrity. Many folks come and try and figure out how to bolt it on, and it's a bad idea. So in addition to the sort of CRUD and watch, which is a notification style uh, watch uh, of resources, there are a whole bunch of additional uh, behaviors that happen on every operation. So for mutation, here's a list. This is not that talk, so we're not going to go through all of them. I will sh share slides, so don't worry about taking notes. Uh, so, but some of the things here, authentication, authorization, there's validation, there's uh, optimistic concurrency. You can do like a check and set style uh, precondition. Like if the resource version is this, then do this other operation. Otherwise, it can modify and try again. On deletion, there are some other things that happen. And finally, on get, there's another list of things that happen. The point here is not the actual things in that list. It's that if you've ever built any distributed system, you know that these things are really complicated and really hard to get right. And the Kubernetes community has worked really hard and written really good code that should last a long time to solve many of these problems. The other thing worth noting is that this is portable by design. It works on every major cloud provider, on-prem. It even works on a cluster of Raspberry Pis. So you write once, there's no vendor lock-in. Uh, when people talk about uh, hybrid and multi-cloud environments, uh, you can't bolt that on later. You just can't design it in. So now there's 50 certified Kubernetes platforms and distributions. It's also extensible by design. And so we're going to rip through this part. Custom resource definitions is what we're talking about. And so you create a YAML file. It specifies what you want to create, the resource type. And then a simple command line uh, apply of a resource definition. 
You then create an instance of that resource. And then you can use the command line tool that comes with Kubernetes, Kube Control, to describe and explore those types that you've created and the instances of those types. So all what we saw before, you get that for free when you're using custom resources in Kubernetes. It's portable and extensible. It's been shown to be effective, and other projects in the space are starting to use the Kubernetes API, even when it's not to do with containers at all. So I want to leave you with this thought that Kubernetes is really more than container orchestration. It's the Kubernetes resource model that is transforming the way that systems are designed, built, and operated, the way that people reason about distributed systems. So folks that you interact with will have these expectations when they come to design their next distributed system. There's also a lot of work still to do. The community is active. Please come to the Kubernetes community and figure out how you can get involved. Thank you.